The FDNY's implementation of science-based research is nothing new. In fact, our relationship with UL began back in 1998 after the Vandalia Avenue fire in Brooklyn claimed three of our members. Since then, our ability to combine research with our tremendous field experience has enabled the FDNY to give our members the best possible procedures and therefore position ourselves for the best possible outcomes, both for the people we are sworn to protect and our members. As the modern built environment and what is burning continue to evolve, so will the FDNY. This video shares a real life example of the research in action in the FDNY. Utilizing UL tactical considerations derived from multiple research studies combined with our vast field experience in the FDNY, we demonstrate that in an ever-changing fire environment, our department continues to operate professionally and proficiently to save lives and protect property. We hope that by sharing this video, we can encourage others to make the commitment to evaluate and evolve as necessary to pursue excellence on the fire ground. There was recently a fire in the Bronx where firefighters were having a difficult time accessing the fire through the interior. The incident commander made a decision. He had a, a hose line on the exterior of the building. The chief communicated with the interior teams to back out into the hallway and close the apartment door. We were gonna employ the exterior hose stream and anybody that's seen that video, the hose stream was operated perfectly. There were fire out several windows and they moved from one window to the next, operating that line at that distinct angle up at the ceiling, did not whip it around in a clockwise fashion, and they darkened the fire down probably in 20 seconds. Most of the fire was darkened down, moving from window to window. And it was, it was extremely effective. It was a large multiple dwelling, occupied building, and uh, obviously certainly could have been many occupants above the fire. So I think that use of that stream uh, was beneficial in that particular case. So we've learned a lot over the last several years as it relates to the use of exterior streams. I firmly believe that there are times when exterior hose lines are absolutely necessary. FDMY doctrine is we've always been, we will continue to be an aggressive interior firefighting force. However, we could talk about some cases where we have used exterior hose lines very effectively to put water on the fire, and I've seen operations uh, over the course of my career when we were having difficulty either accessing the fire or there was just too much fire for the firefighters to overcome on the interior of the building. We probably should have considered an exterior hose stream sooner than later. I can think of many, many cases in my career, as a, both as a company officer and as a chief officer. The key concern is making sure that the incident commander is advised. The incident commander communicates that an exterior host stream will be used in a particular situation, communicates with the the uh, troops that are working inside the building. And once that communication and coordination takes place and the tactic is employed, it's effective. We've learned that it's effective. However, it has to be done properly. The concern that has always been discussed is movement of air, uh, movement of products of combustion, pushing fire, as they say. So we've learned that if the hose line is operate in a particular way, that doesn't really happen. So if the hose line is operated with the line at a, a distinct angle from the exterior and the line is directed at the ceiling for a short period of time and fire is darkened down, it's shut down. And if we don't whip the line around as we've been taught, most of us over the course of our careers, by moving the line, whipping the line around in a clockwise direction. That creates air movement. So what we learned through the research in the last several years was that 
operating in line from the exterior and not whipping it around in a clockwise direction is straight stream aimed up at the ceiling. It's effective. I could talk from my experience through the course of my career, uh, particularly as a, as a company officer. Uh, I had many, many occasions as a company officer where we employed the use of an exterior hose stream uh, in order to be able to um, get into the building uh, when we had no other choice. We had to use the exterior stream. And so for us to say that we've never done it or it's never a tactic that we, uh, we, we've used in the past, that's not, that's not true. Uh, I can remember many times as a chief officer where I, I directed a unit to operate a line into the building from the exterior uh, when things were going bad. We weren't making progress. We had people in tough positions above the fire, and we, we, we used an exterior hose stream uh, more than once in my career as a chief in particular, too. So I think our, our standard operating, operating procedures are solid. We should continue with our standard operating procedures, but we should always be thinking, thinking ahead and thinking outside the box. So plan B, that's one of the things that we encourage chief officers to always be thinking ahead. I'm a huge proponent, particularly at smaller buildings, to have an extra hose line in front of the building at all times, ready to operate. Um, so there would be occasions sometimes when that, that extra hose line, whether it's deployed to another location in the building or if in fact we have to use it from the exterior, but if we don't have it there, we don't have that option as, as fast as we would want it. We had a case recently uh, in, uh, we had a May Day for a lost and disoriented firefighter. And the use of an exterior host stream proved to be absolutely beneficial to that operation. That firefighter was found, the firefighter was removed from the building, water was put on the fire, there was good communication and coordination from the incident commander to the line that was in the interior of the building and the line outside darkened down the fire very quickly and certainly facilitated the search for that lost and disoriented firefighter. When we have trap members, I think all bets are off. We do what we need to do. We have to get water on the fire and I'm, I'm, I'm fine with an exterior hose line for a trap member immediately. Uh, but it still has to be communicated once the, it is employed. We have a lost, trapped, or missing firefighter, and that firefighter is in imminent peril. Exterior hose lime is an absolute, uh, absolute possibility, and it should be used for those situations. We, we sometimes have the debate simply about we're aggressive interior firefighters, but we forget about the end game, we forget about what our mission is. Our mission is to extinguish the fire. So the incident commander has to be very clear, uh, very uh, emphatic, and call the team on the interior of the building, call the engine and the ladder companies that are on the interior, both on the fire floor and the floor above, and say, we are going to use an exterior stream, back out into the hallway, close the door, and let me know when all the members are in a safe area and don't be afraid to do that. You are the incident commander. And again, young chief officers, covering chief officers might be less inclined to do it, but you are in charge. That's what we pay you to do. You are the incident commander and you have to make those decisions. They're difficult decisions at times, but when you think you need to make it, you make it, but make it clear and be very, very, uh, don't take no for an answer if that's what you want to do. And that goes for anything on the fire ground. And sometimes we all, uh, all of us have experienced uh, the, uh, the anxiety that goes along with that decision.